Welcome to Stribblings, New York. I'm your host, Rob Taub, on WOR AM Radio 710 on your digital dial and iHeartMedia company. Stribblings, New York is a show about business, culture, and people. We have a wide range of guests from authors, producers, actors, artists, restaurateurs, as well as people, of course, from the world of real estate who will advise you on buying, selling, or renting a home or apartment. Today we have an eclectic group of guests. Uh, Melissa Cohn will be our first guest. She's on the phone. We're also going to have Tracy Neeporent, who is a proprietor of numerous restaurants, Tribeca Grill, Nobu, and most importantly, as we kick off the baseball season, the Acela Club at City Field. So when you go to a Mets game, as Melissa and I frequently both do, and if any Mets players or fans would like to get a mortgage, call Melissa and a home, call, call Tony Simone uh, or email them. We'll be blabbing their email addresses and, and phone numbers throughout this broadcast. Uh, Melissa and I are going to be discussing many things besides the Mets today, including the Fed. Welcome, Melissa. Thanks, Rob. Happy to be here. So what's uh, this is the, the weakest point in my uh, part of my wheelhouse is my knowledge of the economy and the Fed. That's why you're such a frequent guest, because you help us with this stuff. What's going on now? Well, you know, as we know, the Fed did not raise rates in March, and we are now a couple of weeks before their April meeting. And the question is, will the Fed raise rates again in April or will they put it off? And Ms. Yellen spoke last week, and I was very dovish in her tones, stating that they had to be very cautious about their approach to interest rates and that it needs to be gradual so that it does not have any negative impact on the, uh, re- you know, the growth in our economy today. But right after that, there were several Fed members who said, no, Janet Yellen is wrong and that the economy is strong enough to withstand a rate hike and that rate hikes are necessary and that they should continue on their original plan from last year, which was to raise interest rates four times this year. The markets are now predicting, or the Fed funds are telling us, that they see maybe a one rate hike this year, but with all of this Fed chatter and a couple of actually pretty strong economic reports, uh, people are looking towards the fact that the Fed may raise rates sooner versus later. Um, The most important report was the ISM Services Manufacturing Report, which came out this week, and it told us that the service sector of our economy is growing, and the numbers were the strongest that they've been in a number of months, including the employment component, which is key because the service sector in this country employs 80% of all, or holds 80% of all Americans' jobs. Big number. So, here's a thing that always stymies me is you have two economists and they each win a Nobel Prize for their theories on the economy and they each say and predict the opposite thing. So how do you, what do you use to, do you, do you have hard data that you always go to on this since I'm now Donald Trump? I know we don't talk about politics here, but he's predicting a recession. Um, Well, he's not the first that has been predicting a recession. And I think that what, in my eyes, and and I can give you any answer any which way you want because everyone has their own opinion, but it seems that our economy is, you know, on that slow growth trajectory. It's basically the new normal, meaning that instead of having the average growth in our country of being over 3% a year is at a growth rate of 2%, which is obviously much less, is really sort of the new norm, and we're sort of muddling along on that path. Where we can run into trouble is what's going on in the rest of the world. You know, Europe is having some uh, economic issues, Japan, China, and I think that what Janet Yellen said, which is very important, is that it's not so much a concern about what's going on here internally, but what's going on around the rest of the world overseas that could really impact our economy. So it's like the stock market reacting to bad news in China or uh, Saudi Arabia, wherever it may be? Exactly. I mean, on Tuesday, the stock market dropped 130 points, uh, mostly due to losses in Asia and in Europe, and not necessarily here. In fact, the stock market went down on Tuesday in spite of a strong ISM report. So then what is your... 
it, advice right now to people that are are about to try to obtain a mortgage? I think that what's really most important to understand is though even though rates may go up a little bit, that interest rates are really still historically very low. So that if you're locking in on a jumbo 30-year fixed at three and a half percent, or worst case you have to lock in at three and five eighths or three and three quarters, that that minor difference in the interest rate is not going to have a material impact in your ability to get financing, nor will it have a big impact in your monthly payment. Well, you know, that's a really good point because my mother was in the real estate business. And I, in fact, I got my real estate license, sadly, before I even got a college degree, as my mother made me. Uh, but I still remember I was 1979. The interest rates were crazy because my mother used to complain about them all the time. But nonetheless, she still sold homes and she still had, I think, three offices doing business then. So and and what were they they were like like vigorous from a loan shark back then i think they're 18 19% my exactly in fact when i started in business you know over 3 decades ago i was out selling one year adjustables at 15% and people bought people took the financing i think that what people need to understand and what our buyers need to look at is they need to look at the interest rates that they're paying relative to the rest of the economy well then, what happens? How you know? And and if there is a, a a jump in interest rates when they come down, can people do do refis? Is that Absolutely. common? Absolutely. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of all mortgages have no prepayment penalty. So the mortgage that you start with is not the mortgage that you have to live with. You know. So for example, if you're you know you're thinking that you know okay my income is going to be much stronger in three or four years, you may say let me take a five year adjustable which you can get at two and a half percent instead of looking at 30 year fixed at three and a half percent. So you need to look at the mortgage and the product and the rate relative to the environment today, taking into consideration what could happen. When the Fed does raise rates, mortgage rates are likely to go up. But on the other hand, as weak economic data anywhere in the world starts happening, you know, that will help to bring interest rates back down. And right now I think really it's just one big roller coaster ride. But you know, it's a, there's an express. Hello, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard I heard a crackle. I heard a noise. I, just my bad headphones. Uh, or somebody's eating Rice Krispies in the control room. Uh, there's you know an old expression on Wall Street. Not that I want to condemn any of our clients. They're bulls, bears, and pigs. Uh, and it's like the markets. Uh, the Dow is over seventeen thousand, and not too long ago was it six. So I I think it's good. I think it's incumbent upon us to remind people where mortgage rates have been and that we are historically low and uh, this is a good time. It's a great time to lock in. I mean, real estate mortgage rates are really low. There's some good values to be had in real estate. And you really, when you're looking to buy a property and take a mortgage, you need to look at why you're buying. Are you getting ready to get married? Are you having a child? Um, and focus on you today and not focus on what's happening in the world for the next, you know, 10 years. Uh, I'm going to write this down after I play back and use that as a as a, a mantra for some people. And Melissa, that is good advice. All of your advice is always great. Thanks so much for joining us, and I'll speak to you again soon. Look forward to talking soon. Thanks Bye. so much, Rob.